Lost media that is covered on YouTube or otherwise typically focuses on the more lighthearted creepiness of lost or cancelled episodes of popular TV shows. But what about incidences of lost media that are horrific? Media that has captured in some way something terrifying. This video contains sensitive subject matter that may disturb some viewers. This video was sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is my go-to for anonymity and web security. They have RAM-only servers, which means that if anything were to happen where those servers got raided, all your data is lost when they try to pull it. On top of that, you are no longer region locked with Surfshark. And what does that mean? Well, typically Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus only gives you access to shows and movies that are in your country. You ever get a notice that says this video is not available in your country? Well, that's because you're region locked. With Surfshark, you're just a click away of having your server ping you to another location all the way across the world, whether it be Japan, England, or wherever. And that means you've got access to a whole bunch of different libraries for your favorite streaming services. Not to mention total anonymity online and peace of mind. There's even email alerts available to know if anything has been, well, threatened. And the best part right now is I got a sweet coupon for you. If you enter promo code PLAGUED, at checkout is surfshark.deal slash plagued, you're going to get 83% off and three months free. That's less than $3 a month for possibly the best VPN service available in the market right now. That's right, 83% off and three months free. Just use code plagued at surfshark.deal slash plagued and get yourself hooked up with Surfshark. Get anonymous, stay safe, and have fun. Grizzly bears are among some of the most majestic and fearsome animals on the planet. With males weighing over 800 pounds and claws up to 4 inches in length, they are as fascinating as they are dangerous. But that didn't deter bear enthusiast Timothy Treadwell. Tim was born April 29, 1957, in Mineola, Long Island, New York, and was one of five children. He attended Kennequote High School, where he was the swimming team star diver. He was also very fond of animals, even keeping a squirrel as a pet named Willie. He would attend Bradley University on a swimming and diving scholarship, and this is where something strange changed in Tim. At Bradley University, he claimed to be a British orphan, and other times, he claimed to be Australian. According to Tim's father, Val Dexter, Tim lost the role of Woody Boy to Woody Harrelson in the sitcom Cheers, and then spiraled into alcoholism as a result. In 1987, Tim would legally change his last name from Dexter to Treadwell, a family name from his mother's side that Tim would use on occasion. He decided to travel to Alaska to watch bears after a close friend persuaded him to do so. He wrote that after his first encounter with a wild bear, he knew he found his calling in life, and now, quote, his destiny was entwined with those bears. Tim spent 13 years studying and living amongst the bears before meeting his, some say, predictable demise. In October of 2003, Tim and his girlfriend, physician's assistant Amy Hugengard from Buffalo, New York, visited Katmai National Park on the Alaska Peninsula across from Shalikoff Strait from Kodiak Island. According to Tim's diary entries, his girlfriend had a greater fear of bears and felt very uncomfortable in their presence. Her final journal entries indicated that she wanted to be away from the park and return home. Their camp was set up near a salmon stream where wild bears commonly feed in autumn. During autumn, bears are actively trying to eat as much as possible to pack on weight for the winter. This time was also an off-season for Treadwell to be in the park, as bear watching is more of a summer thing for this very reason. The bears become aggressive. It is believed at some point while Tim and Amy were setting up to record another video, they hit record but either left the lens cap on or the camera lens was obstructed in some way. However, it captured six minutes of horrific audio. The tape begins with Tim yelling that he's being attacked. Come out here, I'm being killed out here. Flesh ripping from his body as he's mauled by the ferocious beast. Amy then can be heard yelling at Tim to play dead, as the bear seemingly retreated to a nearby forest. 
However, the recording continues with a 28-year-old male grizzly bear returning to further attack Tim and drag him into the forest. The media cuts off at around six minutes. On October 6th, when Kodiak Air Taxi arrived to pick up the two, the campsite was ravaged and neither Amy or Tim were anywhere to be found. However, the massive grizzly was close by. Tagged Bear 141, and it was protecting the campsite. The air taxi pilot contacted park rangers who ended up killing the bear during their attempt to retrieve the bodies. A second adolescent bear was also killed a short time later when it charged the park rangers. An on-site necropsy of Bear 141 revealed human remains inside of its stomach, such as fingers and limbs. The younger bear was eaten by other animals before it could be necropsied, so it's unclear if that participated in any part of eating Tim or Amy. Also discovered close by were the remains of Timothy Treadwell and Amy Hugenyard in pieces. Treadwell's disfigured head, partial spine, and right forearm and hand with his wristwatch still on, were discovered a short distance from the camp. Amy's partial remains were found next to the torn and collapsed tents, partially buried in a mount of twigs and soil. In 2005, a documentary directed by Werner Herzog was released titled Grizzly Man, which features interviews with people who knew Timothy Treadwell, as well as his own footage. There is also a segment where Herzog was allowed to listen to the death tape and his reaction was to claim it needs to be destroyed. The audio itself has never been leaked to the public, and even the autopsies of the two victims are sealed as they are considered too horrific and graphic for the public to see. However, sometime, I believe after the Grizzly Man documentary, an audio snippet was published online, perhaps first on YouTube, of the supposed death audio of Timothy Treadwell. The few people who have heard the real audio claim it to be fake, debunking this myth. However, the audio hoax is bone-chilling and seemingly accurate to what this sort of attack would sound like.
The 9-11 terrorist attacks were one of the most tragic and terrifying events in American history. Two planes were hijacked and flew into the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center in New York City, killing over 3,000 people and decimating the two buildings, as well as others, covering the city in ash and debris. The conspiracy theories and resulting media clips surrounding the attack are also incredibly disturbing, much of which seemingly has disappeared online. Sometimes the resurface again later labeled as rare or unseen footage, despite it once for a short time being widespread, then suddenly only a few clips seem to be found. Given the size of the city, its population, and the gravity of the event, many people were in fact recording at various points of this tragic day, with the 9-11 jumpers being one of the most harrowing pieces of media publicized. People jumping from the towers to their deaths knowing they would otherwise be burned to death. With these photos and video being out there, with some sort of it being lost to time. It is said another video exists and used to be widespread online as a shock video. A video crudely named like many other shock videos. In or around 2006, the video supposedly began to surface online allegedly showing footage taken from the ground around the towers, specifically the plaza below. The video was entitled, LOL Superman, and allegedly showed jumpers hitting the ground at high speeds. The video begins as two cameramen are making their way up the stairs towards the plaza, and then quickly running to one of the sides of the North Tower. It is then alleged that, like the aforementioned 4chan thread, graphic imagery of a single body or bodies falling onto the pavement, as well as close-up shots of the corpses that have landed or shown, before the cameraman or cameramen make their way out of the plaza. This claim was first posted to the X boards on 4chan, then eventually picked up interest via a Reddit post in 2022. But in general, the video itself is speculation, as there are many witness accounts of this alleged video, yet not enough evidence to support it actually existing other than believability. And of course, witness accounts vary. Some screenshots from other video and photos exist supposedly showing the would-be cameraman and the supposed thumbnail for the video. But these claims have been debunked as far as I know. Many serious 9-11 archivers and historians agree the video is most likely nothing more than an internet rumor, an urban legend. However, with as much footage there is out there, mostly missing or removed from hosting sites as well, it wouldn't be so shocking to find out that this video or something like it exists. On October 22nd, 2022, Redditor user Executor Max posted their findings in regards to contacting the 9-11 Museum in New York inquiring about them potentially possessing the video. In the email message they received, the memorial does not deny that they possess the footage that may be LOL Superman, but that they do not have the right to share or license the footage they're looking to obtain. While this does not conclusively prove that the museum is in possession of the footage, the likelihood of releasing the footage is next to impossible. Another possible lead, if it's to be believed, came from yet another Redditor who formally put in a request for the FBI to disclose the footage. Allegedly, they had declined to share the footage due to it being used as evidence in an ongoing criminal case. And if this is true, it seemingly confirms the existence of LOL Superman. However, it just means they would be even less likely to be made public. So for now, it's lost media that's not confirmed to exist. Stephen Griffiths, now known as the Crossbow Cannibal, murdered three women between June 22nd, 2009 and May 21st, 2010. He had lured three women, who were all sex workers, back to his apartment in Bradford, West Yorkshire before murdering then butchering and eating parts of their bodies. Prior to the murders, Griffiths already had a criminal past. At age 17, he stabbed a supermarket manager with a knife, resulting in him being jailed for three years. During his time in custody, he admitted he had interest in becoming a serial killer. He was eventually diagnosed as a quote, schizoid psychopath. Despite this, 
Griffiths seemingly turned his life around by 2009, but his obsession with serial killers remained, and he even studied for a PhD in homicide studies at the University of Bradford concerning 19th century and modern murders. Local police were concerned with Griffiths allegedly stating that he was a serial killer in the making. The police seized his hunting weapons and found books on dismemberment and serial killers in his apartment. They also requested that the complex installs better CCTV systems to capture any incidents should they occur. And on June 22, 2009, 43-year-old Susan Rushworth disappeared. She had struggled with addiction and to drugs following a brain hemorrhage that caused epilepsy and had become a sex worker to fund her addiction. The last known CCTV footage of her alive was her getting on a bus. At some point, she ended up with Griffiths at his apartment, where she was killed by a crossbow bolt, then dismembered and partially eaten by Griffiths. Then, on April 26, 2010, 31-year-old Shelley Armitage went missing. A former student at St. Joseph's College in Bradford, Armitage was known for being popular and good-looking and had aspirations to succeed in a modeling career. However, that would not happen, as her life took a turn, and she ended up in the apartment of Griffiths, where she would be killed by a crossbow, then dismembered and partially eaten. During the process of butchering Armitage, Griffiths decided to record the dismemberment on his cell phone, where he discussed in detail what he was doing. He tied her up in the bath before spraying on her back with black paint, the words, my sex slave. He then says in the video, I am the then pariah, I am the bloodbath artist, here's a model who is assisting me. He then dismembers her with knives and power tools. At some point following this, he ended up losing his phone on a train. It ended up in the possession of a few people who were able to watch the footage. The phone was even sold twice before it was handed over to police, so it is unknown if that footage was copied, saved somewhere else, or posted for others to view. It's considered lost. According to reports, the cell phone also contained footage of Griffith's other murders too with a senior detective describing it as one of the most disturbing things he had ever seen. And finally, on May 21st of the same year, 36-year-old Suzanne Blamirez went missing, lured back to Griffith's apartment under the pretense of taking photos for a supposed art exhibit that Griffith was working on. At some point during their encounter, she ran out of the apartment and down the hallway, and this was captured on CCTV. Griffiths gave chase and eventually tackled her, shooting her in the head point-blank with his crossbow. He then began dragging his victim back to his apartment when he noticed that he was on CCTV camera as well, and he had just captured the entire murder on film. After dragging the lifeless body into his apartment, he went back outside again, and while still wielding his crossbow, he flipped off the camera, went back inside to butcher and partially eat his victim before dumping her body in the river air, where some of her remains were discovered. Only part of this footage was ever released publicly on media snippets of Griffiths flipping off the camera. However, the remaining footage and the videos from this media from his phone are considered lost media and may very well be out there still. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this or would like to support me directly as I'm not monetized by YouTube, Go down into the description and check out all my links like buymeacoffee.com slash plaguemoth or subscribestar.com slash plaguemoth. Better than Patreon that has all of my premium content in downloadable format as well as exclusive sneak peeks, merch discounts, discord access, and so much more not allowed on YouTube. Again, thank you for watching and be safe out there.